Hello all you beautiful people, how you doing here today? This lovely Tim Tristan, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome, hi! Today we're going to have another tutorial on Tinker's Construct. And today it's going to be all about how to make the smell tree, the different parts you can make, the sizes, all that different kind of stuff. If you have not seen the previous ones, I highly recommend it. I will put a card up above so you can... Uh, check those out because I will not be going over the same recipes. So um, if you need some of the recipes that are in the previous ones, you definitely want to check that out. All right. So to go from our melter, which is here, to our smeltery, which by the way, this is the biggest one you can make. And let me tell you, even in creative mode, this took an insane amount of time to build. It was absolutely crazy. But that is the largest, which the largest you can make. Uh, each smeltery has to be square. The max size is 16 by 16 by 65, but that means when you do the internal part, it has to be 14 by 14 for the uh, blocks that you do in the inside, which is what this is the internal part here. That part has to be 14 by 14. And then you can go 64 tall. Look at that. It's insane. And this, of course, is the smallest one you can do, which is a 2 by 2 in the internal. And then we have just this one layer on the outside. So this is the smallest version you can make, and that is the largest. Now, of course, you can do all different kinds of blocks and stuff, and we're going to go over all of that. All right, so first of all, one of the important things you're going to need is the controller. So to do this, uh, you're going to need one of these seared heaters that we made last time. And you're going to have to take copper and pour over it. So I have a whole bunch of materials in here because I wanted you to be able to see this is with the seared glass, and we'll go over that recipe. It's really easy to make. But it's one of the things you can build a smeltery out of, and it makes it really cool because, as you can see, you can actually look and see what is inside your smeltery. Now, because this one is so large, I had to put a ton of ores in here in order for you to see it. Um, and we even got some that mixed... Um, but if we click on the smeltery controller here, you can see exactly what's in here and exactly how much more you can hold. This holds an insane amount. And the only reason I could ever see to build something like this is just to say that you did it. <laughs> I could never see fully filling this up like that would just be absolutely bonkers. Yeah. All right. So I have copper in here, iron cobalt and molten rose gold which is gold and copper combined so that's why i don't have gold in here because well it just combines to make the rose gold which is very pretty but um yeah so we want to click on here and make sure it is on copper and of course you're gonna have to do this in the melter first uh, because you need the smeltery controller to do this but we're gonna put this in one of the basins okay and we did make sure it was on copper right yeah copper all right look at that 224 blocks of copper that's insane okay so once you put it in the basin you're going to click and pour the copper directly over it now again you're probably going to do this in the melter to begin with at least that's what i do on my playthroughs and once you pick it up, duh, now we have a smeltery controller. It's beautiful. And that is like so. Uh, but again, you can also do it in one of these. You just have the base in here. Have your copper, copper up here in your melter and pour it over just like what we did over there. And it doesn't matter if you're using the heater or the tank to fuel your melter. Again, the melter is on the previous video. Check that one out. All right, next we're going to need a drain. So for the drain, we're going to use four of the seared bricks, like so, and two copper ingots. Next is the seared glass. That is one of the things that you can use. You don't have to. It's just a personal preference. A lot of these are going to be whatever you want to build your smeltery out of. 
Uh, for the seared glass, it's going to be four of the seared bricks with one glass in the middle. Next, we're going to use this really cool ladder. These are fantastic, and I'll show you them in just a second. But you're going to use three seared bricks and four of the seared, sorry, se three seared bricks. And then, okay, that's what I thought. They're both called seared bricks. Okay, you know what I mean. The, the bricks, the ones that you put together. And then four of the seared bricks. But each recipe makes four, which is awesome. All right, and last recipe here, this is the seared fuel gauge. Now it's an alternative smeltery heart, but it does retain the liquid when broken, excuse me. Um, so you can put, uh, it's five of the glass with four seared brick like so. And I'll show you that over there too. That is actually what I have fuel in, in those. And then I have the other ones there that are like these, but we went over those for last time. All right. So these are some of the other bricks that you can, bricks, blocks, the ones that you can use to create your smeltery. Again, you could do it different ways. You can build it out of whatever you can do fancy designs, however you choose to do it. So on this one, as you can see on this side over here, I have, these are the ladders and it goes all the way up just so I could get to the very tippy top. And you climb them just like you would regular ladders. Now, these don't have to just be for the smeltery. You could use these as ladders for anything that you choose to. They actually function fully like just regular ladders. And we're gonna go all the way up to the top here so you can see how crazy this really is. And it really takes that long to get to the top. Seriously, I think this is absolutely insane. Of course, don't forget to light up the top of your smeltery. Stuff can spawn there, but uh, look at that. Look at that. Look how tall this is. It is nuts. I do not recommend jumping off unless you have water right there. But this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. And of course, you can also cover the top of your tank. So like if I wanted to take glass like this, or if I wanted to take some of the, these bricks or whatever, uh, go up one and then, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. And say, I don't have my pickaxe on me. Of course I built this all in creative, but there you go. I can't pick that one up. Uh, but you could build a layer up top here just so nothing would spawn, but then don't forget to light that up also because if mobs get in here, it actually creates blood, which we will need for some stuff. And of course you can catch yourself like on a regular ladder. Um, we will need blood for some stuff, so that will be important. But um, if you don't want it in there, make sure and put something up top. All right. Now, how do we make some of the other blocks? Well, in here we have the seared stone. So that's what happens if you put grout in here or a couple other things like you could actually put seared cobblestone in, you can put any of the seared stuff in and it'll remelt it into seared stone. So, but if we just have the grout in the smeltery or the melter, then you can simply pour it out into a basin and it will create a seared stone block. like so which looks like that stone but a little bit darker it's really cool it's very nice to decorate with and then we have some of these other ones we have a seared paver we have triangle seared bricks and fancy seared bricks now some of these you're just going to take the seared bricks that we made and you're just going to put them in a stone cutter. So that's how you make the fancy seared bricks and the triangle seared bricks. And of course, each of these pieces, you can also make pavers, stairs, and sometimes walls. So that makes it pretty awesome. But you can see some of the differences of how to make some of this, right? Now, some of this you're going to make in a furnace. So if we... Uh, in this one, we have the seared bricks, so if we cook that. And in this one, we have the seared cobblestone. And 
While that's cooking, I will show you how to do the seared cobblestone. Okay, so we're gonna take a piece of regular cobblestone and we're gonna put it in a basin. Now in this one, we have molten clay. So we're gonna pour molten clay over the cobblestone. Also, we could take the polished diorite, put it in and pour clay over. And it's any of the diorite, stone, any of those kind of blocks. And then we have the seared cobblestone. And this one just gives us the seared stone again. So there's different ways you can do it, excuse me. Um, but, you know, everybody likes their different textures. So this is some of the stuff you can do. Now, if we go back over here to our furnaces, you can see this turns it into the cracked seared bricks, which is what I, we have here. And then cooking the seared cobblestone turns it right back into the seared stone. But that way you have different things you can do. You can create a cool pattern. You can do however you want. One of the fantastic things is you can create your smeltery however you want to. Now I will warn, warn you with this tall one here, it burns through a lot of lava. And I do mean a lot. So let me switch back over to creative mode real quick. And let's pull out, um, dun, dun, dun. we're going to need this cause, um, yeah, yeah. Watch this. All right. So let's pull out any of the ores. We're going to pull out some gold. Plus, I will show you how much you can put in here at one time. It's pretty awesome. And of course, depending on how big you make it is how much you can put in at a time, which is why you would want big ones. So like this one, it's 32 ingots total capacity is all that will fit in this small one here. All right, but this big one, I have lots and lots of fuel here. That's what all these tanks are. You can use the fuel tank, but you can also use the fuel gauge to hold your lava for this to use. Now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna directly put some of this in here. Now, of course it's going to, going to mix with the uh, copper because that's how you make the molten rose gold. But look at that, all those are in here. And if we scroll down, you can see there's plenty of room for more. Okay, so gold is at the top now, but it is quickly gonna disappear because it is mixing with the copper. But look at this, all these tanks were full. Look how fast it's going through this. It smelts it so fast, but it goes through a lot of lava. Now, if we were to go to say over here and do the same thing, obviously this one doesn't hold as much, but if we can melt four of them at a time, you're not gonna notice it going down so quick. So the caveat is the bigger you make your smeltery, it does do it really, really fast, but you're also using a lot of lava. So look how, look, Yes, we did quite a few stacks, but look at this. I, I don't want to put any extra lava in until we can see exactly how much it's going to go through. It absolutely goes through an insane amount of lava. So be careful building yours huge unless you have adequate amounts of lava. Um, or if you have other mods, of course, um, like pyrothium or something, you can also use that. But make sure you have an adequate supply of lava close by, a way to get it quickly, because you are definitely going to use it the bigger you make your smeltery. But if we come back over to this one, if you look at the tank here, the tank won't even fit a bucket yet. But again, we only are cooking four at a time. So see, you can see how low down it goes. So. Faster cooking, but goes through much more lava.
look at that. That's how much lava it went through. So it's insane. Now, real quick, let me just show you because um, I know this can be quite confusing. There are a few things when you're making the bottom of the small tree. First of all, if you want it to set flush with the ground, make sure you go down into the ground to build it. So let's say we want to do a three by three. That's a pretty standard one. It used to be the standard one that you had to make, uh, but they have since changed that quite a bit, which is awesome. Remember to leave room for your controller and some kind of fuel. So if you only do one, see it'll show you that you can do one there, but if you only do one, make sure that you have your controller and see how it changes. If I take that out, you can't click on it in valid blocks in the wall. That's because there's nothing here, okay? So it's very intuitive. It very much tells you how to do things, which is very awesome. Uh, but now I can actually click on it and it'll tell me how much fuel I have here, which of course we're using lava, and it'll show you how many you can put in at a time. So, if you want it flush, you're gonna have to do it like that. Now you are gonna have to have something to take it out. So I usually put in at least one drain. So do that and do that. Uh, the nice thing is when you're first starting, you can put drains on both sides. So just because you have the one drain, you can still use two you can use two basins, two tables. You can use one basin, one table. The configurations are great because you can actually do it however you want. Now, say we wanted to build this up higher, but we wanted it to look a little fancier. After you do that first layer, again, you're gonna want more fuel later on, but after you do that first layer, then you can build the next ones out of whatever you want. This, however, if I try to put that there, you see how it's red. That's because glass is not allowed for that block down there. It has to be one of the like bricks or the stone or the, these will work. Any of these here that I've shown you, these will work, but you cannot use glass or anything. It has to be one of these solid type blocks to go for the bottom part of the smeltery. And the nice thing is with the update, it does show you if something isn't working properly, including if you're going to build the big small tree, if you want to do a full 14 by 14, you know, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, and then you go this way 14. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, let me finish this off and I'll show you. Okay, so I have a full 14 by 14. And if we click on this, it'll say invalid block inside the structure. But it'll highlight and show you where it is. So this is what you fully need to do a full, no matter how big you make it. Remember, it always has to be square though. So whatever you have going one direction, you have to have going the other direction too. But it'll highlight it so we know then if we take that block out now it's fully functioning now if we were to take this row down and again you don't need the side pieces uh, a lot of people do just to make it look better but for this i want to show you because even in creative i accidentally messed this up so if you try to make it too big it will warn you that you are bypassing the maximum size. So structure inside is too large. Currently 15 by 14, max is 14 by 14. So then you know, now I was a doo-doo head and uh, didn't pay attention to that until I had fully built it all the way up. Uh, so I had to take down two full sides and resize it. Oh. Make sure if you're going to build the tallest one, the largest one you can do, um, then you want to make sure that you're doing it from the beginning 
the right size. And then from there, you just build up 64 tall. So, but don't forget to count this one. And again, if it's too tall, it'll tell you that too. But if you're planning on to build the big one, again, you can do it here. Look at all that space available. Just know that you're going to need a lot of tanks because like I showed you over here, it eats through a lot of fuel. All right. Hopefully this helps. Um, we are going to cover a couple different things next time. And then we'll go over some of the other things tinkers can do, such as the alloying, making different tools, all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to show you, this is the smeltery. And the smeltery is the only way to get your alloying going, unless you make an alloyer. But the melter only allows one certain type of ore in there, so you cannot ever create alloys in there. All right. Uh, show me some of the cool smell trays you have made. That is definitely the biggest one I have ever made. And obviously I just made it in creative, but that was still insane. That was absolutely insane. I don't think I would ever build that one that big again. I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe one day. But here you go. Here is the Tinker's smell tree, the different ways you can do it. And again, like I said, you can build it whatever size you want, as long as you don't go past max size. And as long as you make sure the interior is square. All right. One other thing I wanted to show you is these tanks. So I have a seared ingot tank here and it's pretty cool because say, you know, you wanted to move your smeltery or you wanted to take some of your liquid stuff, your liquid um, ores somewhere else, you know, whichever one you want to take, you can directly put it underneath a faucet with a drain or excuse me, a drain with a faucet, put it directly underneath like you would the basins or the tables. And you can simply click on it and it'll automatically drain everything into there. Well, everything that's left of the one that you choose. So of course, if I were to pick that, uh, not that one, get tank. All right, so if we were going to get a different one and now whatever the next one is, it will fill it up to full capacity as long as how much ever is in there. So that is another quick way that you can empty it out. You can move stuff around. You can make one of these for each type of fuel, uh, each type of melted ingots you have in there. So there you go. Um, we will go over the other things that you can add to the smeltery a little bit later because I think they take a little bit more in-depth explanations. All right, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Hopefully this helps out. Um, obviously we are not done with the Tinkers series for 116, but let me know what you think. All right, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the notification bell so you can see when all the new videos come out. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys as always. Until next time, this is Lava Temptress, don't get burned. Bye.